Hello, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you're new. My name's Chris and in this video I'm going to be talking about this telescope as a final review because it's going back to First Light Optics. I've borrowed it for four months. I've had quite a number of imaging sessions with it. I've formulated my opinions. I work for First Light Optics also on the help desk so this isn't going to be unbiased so take what I say with that in mind. I'm sure you can draw your own conclusions from my words whether they're sincere or not. So here we go. Before I get going and tell you what I like and don't like, I'm just going to run over the specs of the telescope for anyone that hasn't seen this telescope before. So this is a 90mm ED triplet refractor. So it's got a 90mm triplet lens. The glass type is the equivalent of FPL 53, which is one of the better glass types. And the focal ratio is f6, so negatively reasonably fast with a focal length of 540 millimeters. It comes with a test report. You don't see these that often with telescopes, so it's good that it's provided with one. And it tells you the stroll reading of each telescope, and it's guaranteed to be at least 0.95 on the stroll. And if you don't know what the stroll is, it's a reading between zero and one, where one is optical perfection. So anything, a point, anything above 0.8 is opt, uh, diffraction limited, and those are what your sky watches, etc., would be. And then going more premium, you're getting up to 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0 0.98. This one is 0.966, so quite well corrected optics, I'm pleased to say. I mean, they do take a reading through just one part of the mirror. So you could technically say you could turn that mirror around, take a reading through another cross section of it, and that reading would be slightly different, but it does appear to be an average bit of the mirror, so. Yeah, we'll take this that this telescope's 0.966. So good optical quality is guaranteed and the initial reviews that are out there online, everyone seems really happy with the image quality of these. It's carbon fibre as well, so it's quite light. It weighs 4.5 kilograms fully loaded with the rings, handle, dovetail, etc. Find a shoe. That's about £9.15, ounces, so just shy of £10. There is an optional reducer flattener for the Stella, Stella Myra, and that's a 0.8 reducer flattener. It brings it down to f4.8 at 432 millimeters, so quite wide and fast. Now, I'll, I'll start talking about what I like and what I don't like about it now, because I don't want this video to drag on and for people to get too bored. So what I like about it is that the dedicated reducer flattener is well matched. You get nice round stars in the corner of your images quite easy without too much faffing. I literally just put my Fuji T-ring on the camera, connected it to the uh, reducer flattener and popped it on the telescope. Bingo, round stars in the corners. And the other thing I like about it is the focus is a very sturdy 2.5 inch rack and pinion focus with a built-in rotator and the rotator's got no play in it whatsoever there's just nothing there so you can rotate your camera do it back up you'll check your focus after thinking it might have just shifted and it, it hasn't just while we're on that theme i think the carbon fiber tube sort of helps with the stability of the focus as well because when I've checked focus at the end of the night, it's exactly where it was at the beginning of the night. Admittedly, I don't have the longest imaging sessions. They're usually a couple of hours because I'm a bit of a lightweight and I get tired. I mean, I don't know how it would fare if you were going all night. Maybe you'd have to sort of like keep an eye on the focus a bit more for really long sessions. But certainly I've had zero problems. It's been very easy to use from a focusing and maintaining focus point of view. And I like that it's got a carry handle that's what i use it for but a lot of people will look at that and think yeah i can mount lots of things to that asi air guide scopes whatever you want the, there's even threaded tapped holes on this cnc machine rings as well as the handle so lots of options for adding things to this telescope uh, so i'll just talk about the things i don't like about it now which are the biggest one which is the dovetail it's too close to the rings. The rings are quite wide at the bottom compared to the Vixen rail. It, it looks like those rings are made for a wider Losmondi plate. So when you pop it on, your dual saddle, in my case, the Gem 45, the dual Vixen Losmondi saddle, it fouls. This bit hits the, the saddle before clamping onto the 
the, the dovetail. So what it needs, I mean, it holds it really sturdy. I've had it set up in there for four months and it's just been right as rain. But ideally I want it more clamped on the dovetail than, than on the bottom of the rings. So it could do with like a spacer between the dovetail and, and the CNC machine rings. That's my biggest bugbear with this telescope. The second thing I don't like is not, it's more of a minor thing I'd say, and I can see why they've done it. The dew shield hasn't got a great deal of travel on it. I mean, there's no play in it at all. It's lovely to slide up and down, but it's not bad. I've seen worse, but if it was longer, you'd literally not, you'd not have to worry about dew. You'd not have to worry about collimation because it's a refractor. You don't need to worry about the fo focus because it's such a good focus on its firmly stable carbon fiber. You just wouldn't have to worry about anything at that point. I don't think it just, off do the job for you so i think if it was longer i'd prefer it personally but i think they've kept at it quite short so it folds down to being quite a short telescope and fits in a small travel case and you know that's obviously gonna be better for like taking on planes and traveling and things so i can see i can see the argument for that so really it's just that that dovetail that I don't like about it but apart from that you're guaranteed good image quality and it's easy to use what's not to like uh, that's pretty much wraps it up if you enjoyed that video consider clicking on the video that I'll flash up in a moment which is the unboxing first impressions of this and also this other video where I image with it so if you like this, watch those. I just want to say a special thank you to my channel members, Dan the Man and The Four Grapples. And until next time, tell this class to sod off.